Hey, what's going on guys? Today I thought I'd make a quick video on why Pieta cap and ball revolvers suck, but why I think you should still get one anyways. Let's get into it. All right, I know that intro was a little harsh to Pieta. I mean, do they really suck? Eh, they leave a lot to be desired, let me just say that. But uh, for what they are, at the end, I think you should still get one. Let's go over um, my experience. Now, let's keep this in mind. I have a limited experience with one Pieta. I've had this for one year now. I'm just gonna go over what sucks about it, what you might expect from yours as far as the quality and whatnot, and then, uh, again, why you should get one. So first things first, when I first got this, I was super excited. It was my first black powder cap and ball revolver. Um, pulled it out, it's got some heft to it. Uh, when you're used to carrying modern firearms, especially ones that have a uh, polymer frame and whatnot, it's a lot lighter. These things are heavy, even though um, this is a shortened version, the Sheriff's model, it's uh, about two, three inches short on the barrel. But uh, anyways, pulled this out on the 10th time when I pulled the hammer back, the hammer bolt spring on the inside of it snapped in half. So the cylinder would just rotate freely and nothing worked with the firearm. So that was a huge buzz kill after immediately opening the box to have it be broken within, you know, three minutes and have to explain to my wife, oh yeah, now I have to buy replacement parts and whatnot. And I just spent all this money on this uh, for a new hobby. Uh, she wasn't impressed. I wasn't impressed. So as far as the internal parts, expect to replace that with any cap and ball, ball revolver that you get. I have another one, a U-Birdie. I had to replace it on that as well. So the uh, trigger bolt spring looks like this. When you get it factory, Let's see if I can get that focused. But it's just a thin piece of metal there. And mine snapped right here on the arm for the bolt and just rendered the whole thing useless. What you want to get uh, through Wolf gun springs right here is one that's basically made out of piano wire. And this will give it a much slicker action. You will enjoy pulling the hammer back a lot more. And it just did another glitch right here that we'll get into next. Um, on this, I believe this is what's causing the problem. I have yet to replace it. The hand spring that goes alongside the trigger, or sorry, goes alongside the hammer. On my Pieta, the thin part right here, that is basically just wedged in there. But this one's secure, this is a replacement one. The one that I have, this wiggles around. So I think that's what's catching. So about every 20 times when I pull the hammer back, it will catch. I probably won't be able to recreate it right there. I cannot pull that hammer back. So about every 20 times, I, once I let it go, I hear it click back into place, and then it, it'll work for another 19 times or so. So anyways, that's another annoyance. That's another part you might have to replace. Uh, all of the screws, no matter on whether you get a U-Birdie or a Pieta, all of the screws that hold everything together, these are soft, so you're gonna mar them up. Um, even if you have an expensive screwdriver, one that's perfectly fit for these, if you slip up at all, you will screw up the finish on the screw. It'll ruin some of the metal. You might be able to see that one right there. I was careful, it still happens. Just one little slip and it's, it takes it off. Um, the grip on this leaves something to be desired. Uh, down here at the bottom, the wood overhangs. So when I'm holding onto it, my pinky, it's sharp on my pinky, it catches. So it doesn't marry up to the steel strap there very well. Uh, it overhangs in spots, not too impressed. And then if I take a flashlight here, you can see daylight right through there. And that's another annoyance. Um, but it is what it is. There's not much I can do right now to change that unless I want to work on the grip and I'm not that ambitious to work on the grip right now. Um, the thing that you'll hear everybody say is the markings. As you can see right there, they plaster their writing all over the barrel. If you see any finish gone on the barrel, that's my fault. That's not the how it came. So they have markings right there, black powder only, 36 caliber. It's it makes it look like a toy cap gun is what it does. So again, I think honestly, if Pieta were to put that under here, under the barrel and on top of the loading lever, they would steal a huge market share 
away from uh, Uberti. Uberti is a more expensive um, cap and ball manufacturer. So for the same model, you'll expect to pay $50, $75 more unless there's a model on sale or whatnot. But um, if they were to move that at the price point, everyone would go for Pieta. But when I got my second cap and ball gun, I got a Uberti and this was on sale, the 1851 Navy, and it was only about $20 more expensive than the Pieta, and at the time, maybe $30, and I, I got this one specifically because I did not want the writing on the side. I just think it looks way more elegant with the, the writing on the side hidden. Uh, the fit and finish on this is a lot better, but this also had hosts of problems. When it comes to aftermarket purchase gunsmithing, I had to do a ton more on the Uberti to get this serviceable than I did on the Pieta. So if we were to go and talk about the gunsmithing aspect, Pieta, it was, with the exception of replacing some of the internal components, just the uh, one spring that I've replaced, I had to replace one internal screw that stripped out, one also stripped out on the um, uh, Uberti. When you replace the trigger bolt spring with the piano wire one, this is actually thicker than the thin metal one that I already showed here. So it's thicker this way. And the screw that holds it in hardly has any threads whatsoever. So the factory screw doesn't have enough threads to bite in and get past the thickness of this piano wire. So you'll push down on it and you'll ruin the threads. So you have to get a replacement um, screw. And I found that if I can find it here, this, this size right here. If you can go to your local hardware store and get the M4 seven by five millimeter screws and they'll look something like that. And what I did is I took a uh, little bit of uh, paper towel, I wrapped it around the threads and I took a pair of pliers, held the threads with the paper towel to protect the threads and I ran the head of the screw on a belt sander for a few seconds because once you install it, it'll go down like this into here and it'll stand a little proud and you won't be able to put the trigger guard back on. So once you um, take away some of the head face there, it'll allow this to go back on. But that works out great, um, easy replacement. Um, so let's get into why I think you should get a Pieta. Uh, now, after I bashed it for a little while with the fit and finish, uh, accuracy, it was fine. It's on par with any other black powder revolver that you're going to get. My Uberti shoots a little bit better because it has a longer sight picture, a longer barrel. So I I'm a little more accurate with that, but I still group well with this. I don't have any flyers, so I don't have any uh, ch um, chambers in the cylinder that are possibly um, compromised. So everything loads well, functions well, with the exception of the hammer getting stuck every once in a while, which I hope to fix after this video. Uh, but the price point is the major thing that Pieta has going for it. For any model cap and ball revolver from Pieta, about the lowest price you're gonna see is 250. The highest you're gonna see is about 400. Uh, this one was about 330 for the Sheriff's model 1861 Navy here. Um, but the price point is great, you can get the 1851 Navy from Pieta for about 265, whereas normally this is like 315 uh, from Uberti. Sometimes I think they actually marked it up now to 330. I got it on sale for 295, but uh, from Dixie Gunworks, which I recommend purchasing through them. I'm just a little biased on that, but uh, I've had a great experience with Dixie Gunworks. So price point is, I think, the thing that this has going for it, especially if it's your first cap and ball revolver. It's gonna be the cheapest. You need to know going into it that you're going to have to buy replacement components, some internal springs you're gonna to have to get. They're going to break, especially if you take it apart and you put it back together and you screw something in just a little too tight, it'll snap immediately afterwards. Mine, I didn't even get that far. Right out of the box, it snapped. So was not happy about that. So yes, the for a good first gun for you for black powder, you're gonna learn a lot because they all require gunsmithing. Uberti requires a lot of gunsmithing. Pieta requires gunsmithing. This is a good one to get your hands dirty with to figure out what you're trying to do. Um, I can't say that these are available anymore, being 2020 and 2021, 
there is a run on ammo, a run on firearms. Black powder this time is not excluded. You will not be able to find these hardly anywhere. Uh, during the COVID outbreak that really affected Italy, and Italy is the only one that manufactures these in any numbers whatsoever. So they were shut down pretty much all of 2020, it seemed like, and these are very, very hard to find. I got these right before all of this happened, so I lucked out. Um, but if you're able to get one, I recommend it. They are fun to shoot. Uh, I did not go into the cost associated with getting into black powder. Uh, that's a whole nother video in and of itself. If you want to be more self-sufficient with it, make your own lead round balls and whatnot, I will have more videos on my channel covering all of that. Um, but for a first cap and ball revolver, if I had to do it over again and I didn't have the knowledge that I have now, I would still get the Pieta. Now that I've worked on the Pietas, done some gunsmithing, and I've done gunsmithing on this one. If I could do it over with my same amount of knowledge that I have now, I would get a U-Birdie. So take that for what you will. Uh, the last thing I will include is what Pieta has that U-Birdie hasn't got down yet is the cylinder gap. Now I fixed this one. However, when I got the U-Birdie, the cylinder gap was atrocious between the forcing cone here and the cylinder. There was a huge gap here that was beyond ridiculous and you could see tons and tons of daylight. Pieta has their act together for the main reason that they just get all of the tolerances correct. The arbor that runs through the cylinder here that the cylinder rotates on, it goes into the barrel assembly. This is the perfect length for the barrel assembly. The arbor on the uh, Uberti's is too short and that just creates problems down the line and you have to do gunsmithing to correct that unless you just want to tolerate a large cylinder gap that allows powder to flare out of um, your cylinder as you're shooting. Um, this one is great right from the factory. I did no adjustments on this. I cannot slide a 0 .006 inch um, feeler gauge through here whatsoever. The tolerance is right at 0 0.005 and I can get a feeler gauge in there. So that just goes to show the tolerances that they have right from the factory. That's, that's perfect um, without slicking up the gun any further. That is a perfect, perfect uh, um, cylinder gap there. So anyways, pick yourself up a uh, Pieta, if you are a Pieta hater and you have specific reasons why, please leave the comments down below. If you are a fan of Pieta and there's a reason that I missed, I'd like to hear that as well. Um, if I had to get another one going forward, it would be Uberti. Getting a Pieta though, it's not off the, uh, not off the radar. And uh, the last thing that just came to mind when I said that is that Pieta makes a lot more makes and models that I've seen anywhere where I've looked online. Um, and they make a lot of uh, reproductions that didn't exactly exist in history, a lot of brass frame models or whatnot. But you'll be able to find a greater selection with Pieta than you will Uberti. But Uberti is usually more historically accurate with their reproductions than Pieta. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Hope this helps you uh, make a decision on whether you want to get a Pieta or not. And uh, thanks for watching.